Okay, so I'm going to start the uh, problem session for section, section 6.1. Um, this is going to be the last one I'm going to do today. I'm going to um, send out an email so because I, I know 6.2 is going to be the one where we have the most problems because um, it is it is the more um, conceptually difficult. Um, so, uh, so let's do a couple of these, and this will be the last one I upload for tonight. Um, so we have a problem. Uh, this we have this problem. So we want to sketch the area um, enclosed by the following curves. Um, so we have x is equal to forty-five minus five y squared, and x is equal to 5y squared minus 45. Um, so, so for the sketching, um, you know, you can get a general idea of um, So in this problem, so this is a web assigned problem, uh, it gives you a couple graphs and you know, you're not allowed to have a graphing calculator on an exam. So if this were an exam problem, uh, you need to be able to um, figure out um, uh, which of these uh, graphs is the one you want to use. And we're also, so the second part of the problem is also sketch and approximating rectangle. So this, this gives us enough information to determine um, which graph it is. Um, so you can't see the graphs I have pulled up, um, but what you wanna do for this one is you wanna figure out where the two graphs intersect. Um, and also, you also have to figure out which of the, um, or what kind of uh, rectangle you wanna use here. And we'll talk about how to do that. So in order, so we wanna find intersection point. So these two, equations are already solved for x. So if we want to find out where these two uh, have the same value, we can just set this equal to each other. 45 minus y, or 5y squared equal to 5y squared minus 45. Uh, so if we move all of these to one side, say to the right side, we're going to get 10y squared minus 90 is equal to 0. Uh, factor out of 10, we get y squared minus 9 is equal to 0. y is equal to plus or minus 3. Um, so those are our two intersection points. Um, and now when it comes to the question of what kind of rectangles do we want to use, what that's asking is uh, do we want to use vertical rectangles or horizontal rectangles? So the way I imagine this, and you know, it's, it helps me and it's always helped me, uh, vertical rectangles are, so, you know, if I have, you know, some region here and I want to use rectangles to approximate it, vertical rectangles are, you know, when I want to integrate along the x-axis. That The reason, the way I imagine this is, you know, I imagine these rectangles, you know, filling out this space here, and they have to move, you know, along the x-axis to do that. Whereas horizontal rectangles, when I fill out the when I filled this figure out with the with these rectangles, I'm going up or down here in this case, and that's in the y direction. So my the, what this is asking is which which um, what's your what's going to be your integration differential? Is it going to be dx or dy? Um, and if I want to if I want to integrate you know along if I want to integrate along the y-axis, that's typically when you know y is my variable, and when I integrate along the x-axis, that's when x is my variable. So if I look at you know I'm going to do you know one of these functions minus the other. And in order to do that, you know, it's already solved for x. So if I do, so if I look at this, I can already tell that I'm going to have to integrate with respect to y. So my rectangles then are going to be the um, vertical rectangles, sorry, the horizontal rectangles. Um, so that gives me enough information about um, what my figure should look like, and I can get the answer on WebAssign. And the region looks kind of like this. So it's drawn a lot bigger. And there's, and I have an approximating rectangle 
it looks like this. And again, it's uh, horizontal because I'm imagining when I'm computing this area, I'm filling it up like this. It's going up and down. I stack them up and down. Um, okay, so now I just need to find the area of the region. So if you remember, area for this region is going to be the integral, and I already have the bounds of my integral. This region goes from negative three to three. It's going to be the right function minus the left. Um, so now we have to figure out which one is on the right and which one is on the left. Um, so one way of doing that um, uh, let me make sure I've done this math correctly, actually. The 10 y squared minus 90. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, we're good. Um, okay. So I'm integrating from negative 3 to 3. Now I need to figure out which one is the right and which one is the left. Um, one easy way of doing that is I know when I plug in, um, so if I look at this graph here, so if I look at the one on WebAssign, it gives me that, you know, I have my x-axis and my y-axis. This x value here is 40 and negative 40 on the graph. So if I plug in y equals 0, um, one of them, or sorry, x equals, yeah, y equals 0, one of them should be 40, one should be negative 40. The one that's 40 is the right function. The one that's negative 40 is the left function. When I do that, so let's so let's uh, look back at these. So when I do that, um, actually, sorry, gives them as 45. It's not labeled on my screen here. So when I do that, so when I plug in 0, so if I plug in 0 here, uh, this first term goes to zero. So this function is negative 45. So this function is the left function. So when I do this and now it's going to be 45 minus y squared. So the area then is the integral from negative three to three. I just said that the right function is this first one, 45 minus five y squared. I'm going to subtract off the left function. Oops. Left function is 5y squared minus 45. And I'm integrating dy. y is my variable here. So let's go ahead and just simplify this. Negative 3 to 3. 45 minus 5y squared minus 5y squared plus 45 dy. This is equal to then the integral from negative 3 to 3, 90 minus 10y squared dy. And again, so if you've watched um, my last lecture on volumes, um, yeah, so I did it during volumes. Uh, this is an even function here. So this is even. So I can make this an integral a little simpler. I don't have to, it's just I look for these things because it makes my life a little easier. So this is two times the integral from zero to three, 90 minus 10y squared dy. And let's go ahead and integrate. This is two times 90y minus 10 over three y cubed evaluated from zero to three. So this is two times uh, 90 times 3 is 270 minus 10 over 3. Y cubed, 3 cubed is 27. Um, this is 2 times 270 minus, so 27 divided by 3 is 9, so 90. So that's going to be um, uh, 180 to a, 360. All right, so that one takes care of that one. Um, then again, you don't have to use the even function thing. Um, it just, it makes my life, it makes things easier. It's easier to evaluate this integral at zero and three than it is at negative three and three. Um, okay, so that takes care of 
that problem. Um, so let me see if I can find another good problem. Okay, so this one actually looks really good. Um, looks hard in the sense that it's really good. Okay, so we have sketch the region and find the area. I'm gonna leave the region sketching to you guys. I'm going to draw what they give me. Um, so these are my axes. Um, so we have actually three functions here. Y is equal to four X four divided by X, sorry. Y is equal to 16 X and Y is equal to one over 16 X. And we're told X is positive. Uh, so what this is gonna end up looking like is this, let me come down like this. We have another one that does something like this. So it's drawn much better on the computer, but um, that's okay. So this, so let me label these. Let me actually do three different colors so it's easier to see which functions which. So this is a four divided by X. This one is the low slope one, and this one will be one with big slope. Okay, good enough. Um, okay, so we wanna find this area here. All right, to do this, um, we have to, okay, kind of determine what our integration variable is. Uh, looks like X, uh, yeah, X should be okay to use. You can use Y also. Um, so let me label which function is which. So the green one is one over 16 X. The red one is four divided by X. And the blue one is 16 X. Okay, so now if I look at this, if I look at this region a little more zoomed in, I have this, I have this, and then I have this. So when you're looking at, you know, what are gonna be my approximating rectangles, um, you can see that, you know, if I start doing this, eventually, you know, so the blue one minus the green one is top minus bottom, but eventually that changes. Eventually, the red one is the top and the green one uh, is the bottom. Um, so what we can do for this one is we're gonna have to figure out where the function changes. We're gonna have to figure out, um, you know, where the change, where the top function changes from blue to red. And the way we do that is we figure out where the blue one is equal to the red one. So for this one, what we're asking for is when is four divided by X equal to 16 X. And this one is pretty straightforward to solve. So this one is X squared is equal to one fourth. Uh, and this tells us X is equal to one half. So positive, cause we're told X is positive over here. Okay, so what I can do now is, um, I also need to figure out how far I'm integrating. So I know I know I start at zero here. So I'm, I know this is zero from the graph. So I need to figure out what the X value of this point is. And that's where red meets green. So in order to figure out where red meets green, so this is where I change integration functions. And now I'm gonna figure out where, what my integration bounds are. So in order to do that, I need to figure out where red meets green in terms of X. So green is one over 16 X. I wanna know when is that equal to um, uh, four divided by X. Um, so this one is 16 equal to, uh, so four times 16, 40, so 64. 
This is x is equal to 8. So this gives me, gives me my integration bounds. So now what I can do, um, so let me make sure this is all good here. So blue was 16x, red was 4 divided by x. Okay, yeah, seems to be okay. Um, so, you know, if I made a mistake, it's still the same idea. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set up my integral. So I'm gonna do the integral top minus bottom. And since I'm integrating in the dx or in the x direction, it's gonna be dx. So now I'm gonna split this integral. So this is the integral, so this one's the integral from zero to eight. But now I'm gonna split up this integral because my top and my top function changes. So from zero to one half, my top function is the blue function, so it is 16x. And my bottom function is, I think, the green function, which is 1 over 16x. I'm going to add the integral from, of going from 1 half to 8, um, and then So we're gonna do top minus bottom. Top is now red. Red is four divided by x minus um, one over 16x. So this is as far as I'm gonna take this one. I've set it up. Um, doing the integration is not hard. You're gonna get some weird um, numbers here that I don't, I don't have a calculator in front of me, so I'm not gonna be able to do them anyway. Um, but so again, so the idea is that the thing you have to recognize here is you have to draw it out. Um, and then you have to recognize, okay, there's a spot where the top function changes and that spot is right there. So up until that, or up until this point here, the blue is the top function and then it changes to be, changes so that the red is the top function. I'm um, doing it this way, the green function always stays, the bottom function, so it's a little easier. Um, but what, what, what you have to do there is you have to figure out, okay, where am I integrating to, to what x value, and then where does the function change? So I figured out where the function changes, and that happens at uh, x equals 1 half according to what I have written down here, um, unless I have an algebra mistake that I've missed. Um, no, it seems okay. Um, and then you also have to figure out your bounds here, and then you just set up the integrals. So top minus bottom from zero to eight, you need to split it up between zero to one half and one half to eight, do it like that. So I'm gonna stop here, send you guys, send out an email um, so you guys can start thinking about questions for section 6.2 that you wanna see. Um, they can be from the book um, or WebAssign. If they're from WebAssign, I'll pick something similar that's not exactly like it. Um, so I'm gonna stop here now.